I don't think anybody is ready for this testimony. I keep telling them. I went to a store that the Lord, when he said pursue, and you know, I got to get a photo shoot for this song because if I didn't get this photo shoot to promote this song, it wouldn't happen. The, the, the devil would win. So when I went to the mall and I bought the first outfit, I couldn't find a top, no matter what top I put on of it. It just wasn't working. It too tight, it too big, it too, you understand? So I, I was done going, I was going home because it, it was getting late. And he led me to this boutique uh, that I ain't never seen. And when I look, these, you know, all the, the, the hangers would hang on this big round parasol thing. Yes. The store is packed with all these carousels with all kind of everything back on them. But there was this one big carousel with just one bustier thing hanging all by itself. And the store was packed. So I went up to it and it is in my size. So I took it. And when I look at the line where you would fit clothing, it was so long. So I took it and I bought a belt and I think a scarf and I went. I went home and when I put and I put it on, I said, God, I don't know what you're up to. But somebody gonna die. <laughs> but it's not me. Somebody about to die. Somebody's gonna get cussed up. But God, I don't know what it is that you're up to. I, I got this other blazer and I saw Kirk Franklin wife, you know, in a blazer like that. And Bustier and you know, even her neighbor was showing and stuff. I said, okay. I, I said, God, I need another bustier. So I went to another store around my area you now when I come home and I find it in my size. I, I'm like, oh, in white, the only size, the only one. I said, God, somebody order. So somebody, mm -hmm, something, something going on because I don't know what you up to. I don't have a photograph. This guy said he would, you know, do it for me, but I never seen him take pictures. And where he's coming from, he's gonna be far away. I got to uh, pay for hotels for two nights, this, that, that. So I went to my friend, who I, 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 I'm at her house now. I said, Bridge, she's a lawyer, yeah, but she always come with all these. She would take her wig or this or that or clothes and she would go. And I said, the person who took your, your, your pictures, she said, uh-uh. She's always booked out for months. She's booked out for months. And tomorrow is Sunday. You know what I'm saying? And she said, I'm going to give you the number anyway. And I called her. She said she had some people. Like she said she had four, three, four people or what? For Sunday that day. She said, I'm going to squeeze you in. The makeup girl, she said, I got her. But then she said she forgets she had something to do. I drive 45 minutes to the woman. When I got there, she had told me she got somebody who can do my makeup. I said, can she do wigs? She said, oh yeah, I've done wigs for, I've done like a hundred wigs. Um, I, something said, curl the wig before you go. So I went to a, 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 a ear dressing place and I had the wig curl. And I said, pin it so that the curls don't drop. So when I get there, the lady start cutting the thing from the wig, but I won't say the makeup. She started doing her thing, and I was like, I like I burst bump in my face. Could you cover them? She said, duh, 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 Let me do my work. And I'm like, All right. So when I took the pictures, I said, mm, They're going to curse me out. This white lady don't know what I'm saying. She said, Curse you out for what? I said, You know, I'm a pastor. You know, I'm a minister. I'm, I'm ordained. She said, and I said, they always curse me how I dress if I wear anything and show any cleavage. Or... She said, well, those are beautiful, blessed, godly boots. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's a blessed body you have there. Let them curse me. This woman don't even know they don't. They ain't going to find you to curse you. <laughs> so anyway, I said, God, I don't know what you up to. But I see the enemy trying to shut down this production. And God, when I give the first picture... 
<laughs> to, to one of the producers of the song, you know, just a little on my shoulder short. He say, oh, 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 oh. I say, it's, it's God. It is God. We don't understand it, but it's God. So when we put the picture on, boom, and drop the picture, oh, no. All that the devil was doing to, to shut me down. God, my God, all eyes were on God work now. But they cuss and say, it's not God. God said, go and preach a sermon title. When God breaks protocol. And God started taking me to the Bible now. I said, okay. Isaiah, when he was ministering, warning people. They weren't paying them no mind. They were seeking help. The children of God were seeking help from Egypt and other countries and not from God. God wasn't getting the attention because they were all over the place doing all kind of things, you know? Praising idols and doing other things and looking for help. From, and God said, you strip yourself and go out there. Go strip off naked. Take off your clothes. Even your sandals and go walk naked. I bet if we were there on earth at that time, we'd be like, okay. Even a prophet, he's not one of God's prophets. God would never have a name. You know, see, that's a madman. Yeah? So people start coming at me like, God is not the author of confusion. So was he confused when he told Isaiah to strip? So that people would pay attention to what he's saying. Then God took me to Esther, the book of Esther. Esther was a Jew. Esther had no business mingling with that, that Gentile, that man. That, and what did God do? God, in, in order for him to save the Jews, yeah, what he did, he got Esther into the palace of the, the king. And he dethroned Vashti for this woman to lay Mandushata, to marry Mandushata, an uncircumcised Philistine, I would say. That's what we call it. And God did something. He broke protocol just so that he could save the nation, the Jews. My God, I'm sorry. When I look at that, I say, God, what are you saying? God also took me to another place when he was about to destroy Sodom. You remember Sodom and Gomorrah? What yeah. was happening there? While he was talking, he said, should I hide this from my servant? And when he was telling his servant what he was about to do, his servant said, Abraham said, what is it? What did you find 50 righteous there? He said, okay, I'll save it. And then, then he said, what if it's just 40? He said, I'll save it. Oh, oh, oh don't, don't get mad at me, Lord, but what if you find church? Here and he took it down to 10 and he said I would say I will save and there was no righteous there mm -hmm. all the only person who came out was was who not his wife and children and his wife turned back but God was about to break protocol if there was any righteous there my God of Lord if there was 50 righteous 40 righteous 30 or 10 maybe even five Yes. He took out about four of them. Listen, listen this now. One time, turn pillars on. But listen this now. When God took me there, I'm, I'm like, what? I didn't see this. God also took me now. They making, creating our over this elegant look with my blessed body. It wasn't like, you know, I seen Christians with more breasts out and nobody was saying anything. But, but no, they're looking at me and saying, oh, this lady saw still in her. Yeah, that lady saw still in her. Listen to this song. God broke protocol that day to get your attention. Now you can know that God himself took me out of depression, anxiety attack. But listen, I'm not done. God also took me to Jonah. When Jonah was supposed to go to Nineveh to prophesy to them, he didn't want to go. Yeah, he wanted them to die in their sins. But because of God faithfulness is mercy is grace listen god after telling him get up go out of the fish belly and all of that go when jonah said in 40 days god is gonna destroy this city the kingdom called a fast and what happened after he called a fast? god broke protocol and saved the sinful city God showed me Jesus on the cross. 
Did you not see how he broke protocol? He's not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent. But yet still, we know he's not a liar, but God broke protocol when God became flesh, became, oh God. The Bible said in 1 John 1, it said, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word, he, he became God, right? He was took on flesh, you know. Mm -hmm. And he came here, he broke protocol and came down. He also is a king, the king of kings, and he broke protocol. And he, oh, he just went on a, so lonely on a donkey, riding into Jerusalem. Hosanna! Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He, listen, he broke protocol by allowing himself to be stripped and go on that cross to die for our sins. So God, when God broke protocol with me, when I tell people God dressed me, they didn't even, they don't get it. They don't get it. The next thing when I saw that, I remember when Paul said, I become them as to win them. Why would God save me and send me to a prostitute in this place where I, I saw everybody marked to, for hell? Why would he send me in there to save that woman? Oh. Why would he send me to the prison with a woman? Lord God, you know what? So Maria, what <laughs> I, I'm thinking of those young women that you, you talked about earlier in the interview who are suffering from abuse and anxiety, depression based on what has happened to them. And even young men and even older people. Can you use this time to just talk to them, to pour into them? Oh my God. All right, let me talk to them. Okay, people of God. I was raped beaten and left for dead. <laughs> oh, I've gone through so much that. There's a book coming, but they couldn't hold in 10 books. My dad was so, he was such an abuser that he would chain me with chain, actual chains that you see, you know, slaves wear or the, the oxen or the cow, yeah? <laughs> my dad would chain me with that. Put my hand behind me, chain me, use a padlock, and he would lock the chain together on a, a, a window post, the middle of it. And he would beat me, whether it was electric wire, um, the thing that you see coconut grow on, the, the, the coconut jelly, we call it coconut glue. We would use it to sweep our the yard in Jamaica. He would also tie me with ropes, big ropes like a cow, and he would throw the rope up on a tree, like an almond tree, you call it, or we call it almond tree. And he would tie it and he would beat me, go beat me, come. Even me struggling to, like, you know, I don't have children because I lose them, you know? And the doctors would look at me and say, oh, the ovaries are nice, you know? It's everything is good there. And I would lose all these children and these babies, and I'm like, you know, sometimes I believe it's all this beating and me running down the hill, sailing down and, and bumping into coconut trees and all these things. And, you know, I, I look at that and I say, maybe all these things why I don't have children. And I remember my dad, when he found out I was Lady Saw, he came back from America. He started calling me and, you know, because I sent him some money and he realized that I have money and he was the one when people used to say, oh, your daughter can sing. He said, sing away. She need to just go sit down somewhere and dead. Mm. This is the same man that came back and live in my house. And, you know, even though his mouth was still, you know what I'm saying? He, he abused us all, but I believe I was one of them that got so much. My mom, all of us, well, let me tell you, my mom loved him until the day she passed. And something about my, my great grandfather wife aunt linda was a prophetess who prayed over me and she would pray over me from that young age i would run to her when my dad was running me down and she would she was crippled and blind because she had a, a testimony why god did that to her she disobeyed god and didn't go to deliver a message anyway let me tell you this people ask me why is it that he's at your house why do you have him living there why is he in your car? Don't you remember he almost killed you several times? But there is something in me. My, this love that God placed in my heart. 
you know, even when people do me wrong and, you know, it breaks my heart deep because I love with all of me. You know, I, what I'm saying to you, even though I was broken, that didn't stop me from loving. And yes. the Bible said that when a, a man ways please the Lord, he make it even his enemies to be at peace with him. You know, you might be going through, you know, and you feel like you're broken, but you're not dead. You serve a God who men broken heart. He is the potter, remember? He can, if you're empty, he can fill you up with his Holy Spirit. There is so much love beyond the brokenness that you may think it's not there and you're bitter, you're angry, but if you stay bitter and angry, that will consume you. So forget about your past and look to your future. And if you allow God to lead you into that future, into that promised land, trust me, you, he will blow your mind. I could have been dead several times. I was in an accident where I was dead. You know, I, re I was revived at the hospital. I was beaten so many times. I was raped. I was rejected. I am a reject woman. But guess what? It is written in my new song. I'm doing better. Jesus loved the rejects. He actually loved the rejects. Yeah. If you notice when Jesus came on earth, who was in his company? The prostitutes, the thieves. Even on the cross, right there, there was a thief who rec I recognized who he was and asked for him to forgive him when he gets into his kingdom, remember me. And he said, this day, you're going to be in paradise with me. So it, it, it doesn't matter who rejects you, who rapes you, who abuse you. You have a comforter who is Jesus Christ. And if you call upon him, if you open your heart for him to come in, because he said that he is the door. And he, he, right now, he's even knocking at your door. And he said, if you answer him, he will come in and he will dine with you. The invitation is always, you don't even have to get an invitation. He already said, cause you cares of me. So he's an open door and he's waiting for you to come in. Let me tell you about another thing that God told me when I was going through my depression. He said to me, Marion, there's a door that I've opened unto you that no man can shut. He did use his own words. And he said, before you get to that door, you have to go through some other doors and these other doors there's pain mm -hmm. disappointment there's going to be delays and setback yes you're going to cry tears yeah but guess what the main door is always open and it cannot be closed just listen to my voice and come continue to walk and because we walk by faith and not by sight people people of god god's creation listen to this I walked into that door and I remember months ago I said, God, I believe I've gone through th those doors already, God. How many doors that you said I'll go through because I've suffered all these things that I said that must be. I must be from God. God, just keep this door open for me. Boom. God answered my prayer. And I I I I I was I'm living at my friend's house and I, I was calling up when the Lord to Bless me with a, a, a place, money to get a place. And I asked him directly. First, I went to an ex son and I sent an email to borrow some money. And when I went to bed that night, the Lord said, so you didn't think your God could give it to you? God rebuked me. And I jumped up and I, I sent an email in the morning. I said, please disregard the email that I sent you. I got you. I didn't get you. I said, I got you. But the thing is, I have no right asking that ex for the money because it was a door that I was opening up. Mm -hmm. Because by morning, I got an email. Oh, I'm happy that you, you got the money, but is this the only way we can correspond now because of an emergency? Oh, I love you and you push me up. I said, listen now, I don't want no love. Mm -hmm. I don't want that love, honey. 
Mm -mm. I, I'm a true woman of God. And listen, I don't I don't just baptize once, you know. I baptize a few times, maybe two times, yeah, mm -hmm, or three. And when I get to Jordan, I'm going to baptize again because I want the devil to know yeah, he got no ties with me. And I made a vow with the Lord. I said, God, if I sleep with another man in my life and I don't get married to him and I go sleeping with him, kill me. Just kill me, Lord. So I know I can't go back on that. So because of that vow that I made, I will never slip up by sleeping with somebody unmarried, you know? No, I will never fall into that. Mm -mm. So what I'm saying to you is all the doors that God said I would go through, he wasn't lying. I went through depression, went through anxiety attack, fear, even jumping in a car from the side. Yeah, I was put out of a house. I was treated bad. I was disrespected as a woman of God. But I'm an overcomer. The Lord said to me that time, you're going to rise. While I was walking around, I slept on my friend's couch for a while, and I was walking around in her neighborhood just talking to the Lord. He, he gave me this. I'm going through my going through, but I'm holding on to my faith in you. You see, the devil has been trying to pin me down, but you lift my face from off the ground. I'm still standing, though the devil wanted me dead. I'm still standing, God has lifted up my head. I'm still standing, it's because I believe. I'm still standing, cause I stay down on my knees. Listen, listen. Praise him. I'm standing, though I'm on my knees. I'm standing like David in front of Goliath. I'm on my knees. I'm standing, though the devil want to keep me quiet. Come on now. I'm standing and I'm lifting up my prayers. I'm standing on top of my grave. Come on, people of God. I'm still standing, though the devil wanted me dead. I'm still standing. The God has lifted up my head. I'm still standing. It's because I'm here. I'm still standing. Cause I stay down on my knees. Hallelujah. On Hallelujah. Knees. Stay on your knees. And you will see what God do. You stay on their knees. Amen. You stay Hallelujah. on your knees. I'm Hallelujah. still standing. Yeah. Marian, what a great note to end on. Let's go. Hallelujah. Thank you for a mouthful. Thank Bless you. And I'm Bless sure Lord. many women and men will benefit Bless from Lord. your testimony. Bless and Lord. I hear purpose. And God has written our script. God has written your script. Bless yes. God. Bless him. Sister Pat, can I say one more thing? Just, yes. Just some months ago, the Lord told me, the thorn, if you remember when Paul said that there was a thorn <laughs> in his flesh, the devil, yeah, he sent a messenger to put it there. And when he asked the Lord to take it away three times, the Lord said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. You know what God told me recently? He said some thorns are thorns of purpose. They were purposely placed on you, in your way in your midst, in whatever, in your situation. He said they were purposely placed there to push you into your destiny. Praise him. Because without those thorns, you wouldn't be pushed. They, they motivate you. Whatever it is that is troubling you or whatever you're, you're, you're up against or what is up against, listen, they are thorns of purpose. They were purposely placed there to push you into your destiny. Have a blessing. Amen. Bless Amen. you. Amen. Bless you, Minister Marian Hall. Thank, Thank you for sharing on raw and unedited stories on God's scope. So and uh, for to our audience, thank you for tuning in to raw and unedited stories. And for those who have uh, already subscribed thank you for those who did not now is the time to do so remember share and like and remember to check out our god school prior and you have yourself a phenomenal